Hello again, Fishalots. It's Johnny Fishalot here, and I got an exciting episode for you where we explore fishing traditions and more importantly, tuna fishing traditions that you may not know about and you may want to be aware of before you book your very first tuna trip. So let's get straight into it. And the first fishing tradition that you really should be aware of, just in case you do hook your first tuna, is you will be expected to eat the still beating heart of your first tuna fish. So that's right. You simply do a gill arch cut, which you're going to do anyway to bleed the fish. Stick your hand right in there, remove the heart out of the cavity, place it on the table. It'll still be beating and go ahead and take your first delicious bite. And here you see this with my good friend Joe. Yep, that's his very first tuna. So of course we're going to remove the heart as you see here. It's still beating, place it on the table. We tell Joe, hey, make sure you get yourself something to wash that puppy down with. And that's what he does. Mm, and there's that first taste of tuna fishing victory. And uh, Joe, of course, is going to wash that down. And you know, I caught my very first tuna when I was quite young, but I distinctly remember it tasting, well, very irony. Let's call it that way. <laughs> ah, delicious. Delicious. It's sashimi. It's sashimi. But there's your first taste of tuna fishing success. Make sure you do it. It's good luck and it sets the pace for all your tuna fishing from here on out. Now, in the United States, our culture and our traditions are we only do this one time on your very first tuna. In many different places of the world, they eat the tuna heart at the beginning of each tuna season. So the very first tuna fish they, they catch, they'll cut out the heart and they'll eat it so that they have success for the entire season. So this tradition expands a lot further than just the United States. Fortunately, though, for us, we only eat the heart once as opposed to the beginning of each season. Nah, and I woke up the baby. <laughs> Oopsies. And that brings us to our second tradition of fishing in general, but really tuna fishing, which is make sure to bust chops when your buddy hooks into a really big fish. So the more the fish is fighting, the more pressure he's putting on your buddy. Make sure the more you bust his chops. So here's a good example of it. Here, I already pre-adjusted my belt. They bring me the wrong belt on purpose. Yeah, that one's not gonna fit. And then they start busting my chops and not bringing me a belt at all. So I'm fighting the fish. I got the rod wedged into my crotch area. You know, these are big 80 pound tuna. Now, hey Junior, uh, hey, belt my belt's right there. Oh, now you want to help me. That belt is and uh, the fight goes on and it took him a little while to bring me over my belt because, you know, I, that's just a tradition of tuna fishing. The bigger the fish, the more you bust chops. I absolutely love these guys. We have a ball, but here you go right here. This is the kind of stuff that you should expect on your very first tuna trip or any tuna trip that you go on. Back into that one. There you go. And there's the crew. And then, of course, after you boat your tuna fish, it's extremely common to just gather around and start storytelling of all the giant, awesome fish that you've caught out of that deep sea when you really do battle with some of these monsters and you succeed and you get them in the boat. Well, just expect a little bit of story time. That's exactly what you see here with JR and us sitting around and we're all telling stories, having a great time. It's just a part of your tuna fishing experience. And the next one here is both going to be a useful fishing tip as well as a fishing tradition when you're offshore fishing for tuna. And that is make sure that you fit your belt prior to hooking into and fighting a big fish. However, make sure you're not walking around the boat with your belt on all the time because quite frankly, it's just bad luck fish a lot. And if you do find yourself walking around with your belt on the whole time and you're not catching a whole lot of fish, well, you can expect the crew to get on you. That chop busting thing that I was talking about. My belt right there. Oh, now you want to help me. Because you're preventing the bite, right? It's, it's a superstition more than a tradition, I would say, but it's something to be ready for. Make sure you got that belt fitted, which is a valuable tip because you don't want to be fiddling around with the belt while a big fish takes down the line. You want to be laser focused on fighting that fish, getting the fish in the boat, but it's also bad luck to be sitting there waiting for the bite with your belt on and not catching fish. And another valuable tip and fishing tradition here is never, ever, 
never bring bananas on a boat, especially an offshore fishing boat going out for tuna or any other big pelagic fish. That is probably the quickest way to swim home there is in the entire fishing community. So this tradition or superstition of not bringing bananas on boats dates all the way back to the 1700s. The most common theory is, is that bananas spoiled very quickly. And so when commercial shipping was taking the bananas from the Caribbean islands all the way to wherever they were shipping, they would rot really quick and they would rush their voyage and hence run into shoals, run aground, run into bad weather, whatever it was, and the boats would sink. Also, when these boats ran into a lot of trouble and they sunk and another boat came upon a shipwreck, bananas float. And so they would just come across a bunch of bananas and unfortunately lost sailors. So there's a lot of different theories out there about bananas being very bad luck for fishing and boats in general out at sea. Just do yourself a favor and throw all your bananas away before you go fishing. <laughs> Well, don't do that. Just don't bring them on the boat. And all right, fish lots. if you want to see how these superstitions and fishing traditions actually play out during a real fishing trip, make sure to click on this video right here where I show you both how much fun tuna fishing is and some of these traditions in play. Thanks for tuning in, fish lots. I'll see you out there on the water.